welcome to, back to my special education news channel. My name is Rachel Coast, and thank you for joining me in today's topic. The topic comes from the book called Contemporary Issues in Special Education. The authors of this book are Ashley L. Renee Hershey and Tony Mild. We will be focusing on chapter eight. This chapter goes over the question, is there an over identification of English language learners in special education? Why is this an issue? One reason this is an issue is because America is supposed to be a patch quilt where everyone's unique cultures, religions, and languages are supposed to be cherished and make us stronger as a country. We need to be giving everyone equal education and not putting them in special education because of a language barrier. Another reason this is an issue, according to Rainier Hershey and Mild 2020, methods to decrease dropout rates among our students that come from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds must be implemented in a systematic process. We don't want our students to drop out because they feel like school, the school system is failing them. We want them to feel like they're getting treated fairly in school. Why did I select this issue? I selected this issue because I want none of my future students to feel mistreated. I want every one of my students to get the best education they deserve. I want them to celebrate what makes them unique, like their culture, religion, and language. We learn from diversity. If we don't have diversity, everyone would be the same, and that would just be boring. I only want my students to be put into special education if they truly need it, not because of a language barrier. Five cons for language, uh, English language learners. One con, according to Artels, uh, Artels, Rudea, Salazar, and Higeria, Higerga, uh, one research study showed that English language learners uh, were 27% more likely to be placed in special education um, in elementary grades and almost twice as likely to be placed in secondary grades. This shows that these students are being overrepresented in special education. We have to reduce this number. A second con according to Rainier Hershey and Mild 2020. In addition, there is a growing concern from policymakers that our um, English, langu English language learners are frequently being educated in restrictive education settings and those settings are not always justified on children's true learning needs. This is not good for our English language learners' education. If the student doesn't have a learning disability or a reason for being in special education, they should be taught in a regular classroom. Uh, the third con, according to Rainier Hershey and Mile 2020, Improved efforts are needed to prevent mislabeling student as uh, special education when they are in fact simply struggling academically because of language, language and cultural differences. We have to be careful with labeling children. Sometimes when we label a child, they lose confidence in their abilities. I know sometimes when I was younger in special education classes, I would think I wasn't able to learn something because of my disability and would want to give up. But really, it just takes me a longer time to process and I need to not give up on myself. Telling these children they have a learning disability when they don't actually have one could hurt their confidence. The fourth con, according to Rainier Hershey and Mile 2020, methods to decrease dropout rates among students that come from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds must be implemented in a systematic approach. I know I already used this quote, but I really think it's a good one. We need to get better with assessing English language learners so that they can get equal education. We don't want them dropping out because they feel like they're not getting a good education. The fifth con, according to Rainier Hershey and Mild 2020, 
However, nationally, some ethnic groups continue to be misoverrepresented as disabled, uh, particularly as learning disabled, mildly uh, intellectually disabled, or emotionally disturbed. This is not okay, and frankly, it makes me sad. We need to find a better way for making sure these students are getting assessed correctly. Oh, uh, five pros for English language learners. One pro, according to Rainier Hershey and Mile 2020, although the identification processes at the state level have helped to address these issues, there is still a long way to go. I'm not saying it's the best pro, but at least it's gotten a little better. As a country, we really need to come up with a better way of assessing these English language learning students. Um, a second pro could be to try and help English language learner students get into the least restrictive environment, especially if they don't have special needs. Least restrictive environments help English language learner students to succeed. According to Rainier Hershey and Mile 2020, this allows them uh, the opportunity to grow and learn in their culturally linguistic skills at, from same age peers with appropriate English speaking, reading, and writing skills. A third pro is that if we have English language uh, students in a regular education classroom, uh, it could help with creating more education in the classroom. We learn from others and from others' points of view. Having diversity can actually bring in ideas and concepts that we're missing in the classroom. So have we have to make sure they are being labeled correctly. And Rainier Hershey and Mal uh, Rainier Hershey and Mal talk about the positive effects English language learners have on their fellow students. According to Rainier Hershey and Mal 2020, instead they will be more likely to receive a more diverse and individualized educational experiences themselves. Uh, the fourth pro, according to Rainier Hershey and Mile 2020, research shows that it is most effective to teach students new vocabulary through extended discussion opportunities after reading or between multiple reading opportunities. Uh, this is a great technique in helping ESL um, English language students uh, if they were to do this discussion these discussions in the least restrictive environment, it would really help them. Uh, the fifth pro, according to Rainier Hershey and Mal 2020, flex flexible grouping research suggests that uh, that utilizing heterogeneous classrooms is beneficial for English language learners. This is another great technique in helping English language uh, students if they were to do group work in the least least restrictive environment. It would help them. Uh, what are some, a couple myths about English language learners and special education? Well, one myth is the ability. Uh, one myth is that the ability to speak English is a measurement of intelligence, according to Berseith and Colorado 2020. In fact, when some of these kids were asked what they wished their teacher knew about them, they said they wanted their teachers to remember their intelligence. That makes me sad these student, that these students feel this way. If anything, they're really smart because they're learning two languages at once. We need to make sure we are giving all our students the best education possible and helping them to feel smart. Another myth in, is that ES, uh, English language students will get support they need in special education. According to Berseith and Colorado 2020, they need exposure to rich language environment and scaffold support that matches their level of language proficiency. We can't be putting students in special education unless they ha have special needs. Um, the, my conclusion, we need to be making sure we are giving our English language learners the best assessments possible, that they are making sure they are having uh, have a special special needs before we put them in special education. If they don't, we have to make sure they are in the least restrictive environment possible. 
People are trying to fix assessments and there are laws that protect English language learners, but we still have a long way to go. English language learning students are being overrepresented in special education. We want all our students to get the best education possible. We don't want to label students in special education because of a just because of a language barrier. Thank you everyone for tuning in to my uh, news program today and see you all soon for our next topic. My name is Rachel Coase and I am signing off. Have a great rest of your week.